Lord, we thank you once again. We exalt and honor you. We thank you for the privilege to come before you tonight, to exalt and to honor you in the assembly of the saints. Father Lord, you are the God who alone is to be glorified. You are the I am that I am, the omnipotent and omniscient God, the one and the only wise God, the God to whom belong glory, dominion, strength, might, wisdom forever. Father Lord, tonight we use opportunity to exalt and to honor you, to thank you for the privilege to stand in your presence once again. Father Lord, as many that are listening to the sound of my voice tonight, I ask that your grace be mighty upon them. As many that are sick, I decree healing. As many that are in one difficult situation or the other, Father Lord, may you meet their expectation. Father Lord, because you told me that the expectation of the righteous will not be cut off. Their expectation will not be cut off tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, without you, a true church does not exist. We ask for your presence. Lord, you are the only one who is able to do all things. Let your name be magnified tonight. Prove yourself once again in the midst of your church. Holy Spirit, teach us what we need to teach. Grant us wisdom and understanding. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, tonight you are welcome to CGF Open House Fellowship. My name is Missionary Collins. Tonight you have an opportunity to hear the word of God. Our today topic is under discipleship. The topic is the word of God. Today we're going to be stressing the word of God. Last time we told you something that we're going to bring part two of the word of God. The Bible told us that the word of God is quick and powerful and is sharper than any two edged sword. It divides asunder the intent of the heart and strike through bone and marrow. Tonight, we're going to be diagonizing the word of God, putting it into the laser to see how the word of God can transform life, how the word of God can involve and help us overcome all our physical and spiritual combat. Tonight, we're also going to be taking a hint at how the word of God can transform life. Because the Bible said, Thy word has I hidden in my heart, O Lord, that I may not sin against thee. The word of God can be hidden in the heart of a believer and prevent him from sinning against the Lord. So tonight, we are going to be looking at the word of God. Our text is taken from the book of Mark chapter 4, from verse 1. It says, He began again to teach by the seaside, and there was a great, there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea, <coughs> by the sea on the land. So Jesus starts to teach. The first thing we will notify here, the people gathered as a result of what? The word of God. The word of God is what energizes people to come together. The word of God is what transforms the life of a believer. The word of God is what draws men to you. The Bible says that the anointing we receive will be our teacher. We have no need that any man should teach us. This anointing will teach us all things, the truth about the word of God. And this anointing cannot lie. Tonight, the anointing we receive as a result of the word of God will be our teacher. He will teach us the mind of God. He will teach us the truths about God. And that anointing does not lie. And that anointing is what we are going to be looking into today in reference to the word of God. Because the word of God is a sharp sword that can pierce bone that can divide the hearts, that can strike through bones and marrow. That's what we're going to be looking into today. The Word of God is quick and it's powerful. And this Word of God was what drew multitude to Christ. The Bible says on the last day, the mountain of the Lord house shall be high and lifted up. All nations of the earth will flow to it. 
When the, word, when the Lord is lifted up, he draws men to himself. So, what is the word of God? We shall start by understanding what the word of God represents in the life of a believer. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 1. This one down the In power. Oh God. The word of God in Genesis chapter 1. I will read from verse 1. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1. And he said, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God created the heaven and the earth. Full stop. Then after that, the world became void. And because of the voidness of the world, something extraordinary happened. Something happened at the beginning that made the world to become empty. The world became so empty that nothing grows in it. And it was in empty room, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the water. But nothing was moving, nothing stable, nothing to record about at the creation. Between chapter 1 and 2, we discovered there was an interval of which was not known to man, which we are not trying to speculate tonight because it's not part of our teaching. Then, after this interval, in verse 2, the earth became without form because God created the heaven and the earth. That was full stop. We don't know what happened when he created the heaven and the earth. We don't know what he made in it. We don't know. We don't believe that God created the heaven and the earth empty. But the earth, something happened, and the earth became formless and void, and darkness was on the faces of the dead. The Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the water. In verse 3, God said something. That was the beginning when we understand a change in the formation and the creation of the world. God said, before God said, the earth was formless. But when God said, things became visible. The moment God speaks situation, speak life into your situation, your situation changed for the better. And God is in the business of speaking into the life of a believer. When God said nothing, the earth remained void and empty. It's just like we today, when we are in affliction, pain, difficult situation, when we refuse to speak by faith to that problem, the problem remains stagnant. We ourselves remain at the point of stagnation. But the word of God is what changes situation. That's why the Bible tells us faith comes by hearing. Because for faith to be built in the life of a believer, he needs to hear something. And for what does he hear that energized faith? Is it fading word? Is it earthly word? No. He has to hear something that comes from God. God's word are transformative. And when God speaks a word into the life of a believer, Bad situation take a turn for good. Evil situation change for the better. David was just a shepherd boy looking after the flock of his father until God speak in his life. When God speak, he transformed from being a shepherd boy to become a lion and a bear killer. Then, finally, the defeater of Goliath. To the extent, the sons of the women came and said, Saul has slain his thousands 
David tens of thousands. This would not have happened if David did not stand and first and foremost hear the word of God that came from the mouth of the prophet Eli. What promotes faith in the life of a believer? When you come to a crusade, you come to a conference, you come to a church, people are gathered together to hear you speak. There is no power that comes with you from home to that conference ground. There is no power that comes as a result of your fasting for 21 days. Because if you fast for 21 days like I do, you fast for 100 days, you fast for 50 days, you fast for 10 days, it doesn't transform the life of the believer until you speak your faith into being. Then the situation remains the way they are. That is the excess why believer needs the word of God. That's why the, the psalmist said, "The word has I hidden in my heart. Why? So that I cannot sin against thee. Because the word of God is what the spirit relies upon. At the beginning." The Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the water. Despite the presence of the Spirit of God, we discovered nothing was created until God speak a word. And this word, if not for the writer of John, we would not have understood the mystery behind this word. That the word became flesh the word became flesh that god has ability to separate the word from himself because he is a spirit he is not a man so because he is not a man he has the ability to separate his word and make his word flesh that was why the devil never understand that god has a son because if he has no he would not have behaved the way he did. But he never understood who was the king of glory. Until Christ rose. But strange enough, the demons who lived many years understand who he was. Christ prevented them from speaking when he drove them out because they knew who he was. That his name was Emmanuel. And that being interpreted, God living with us. God word in action. God word in practice. And that same God word became a transformative power that speaks to us in Genesis. In Genesis 1, God said, before God said, let's see the situation of things before God said a thing. The earth was without form, the earth was void, the darkness was on the faces of the depths. That was the situation of the world before God said a word, before God ever speak anything to me. That is your situation today. If you refuse to speak to that problem, you refuse to speak to that marriage, you refuse to speak to that sickness, you refuse to speak to that poverty. You refuse to speak to that backwardness in business. The situation will be stagnant. But when you sum up the faith in God and you decree a thing, it shall come to pass. And light will shine upon your words. Because faith comes by what? Hearing. You have to hear the word of God. And as you hear the word of God tonight, your faith will be built. And when your faith is built, your faith transforms people. This faith, once it is built up in you, it transforms your ability to look into things. But what, somebody will ask, what of those who does not have faith? That is the point of the word of God. Because the Bible says faith comes by hearing. 
The word of God is able to build up faith in the life of a believer. When a believer hears the word of God, he heard how God has done this before in the life of A, in the life of B, in the life of C. Then that believer faith is built up to believe that if God is able to do this in the life of John, God is able to do this in the life of Peter. God could do this in the late this. God can do this in my own life. That is how faith grows. Faith does not grow because you pray. Faith does not grow because you attend service. Faith does not grow because you pay your tax or you fulfill your vow. I will give you a hint from the scripture. They brought a man who was lunatic before Christ. Before Jesus' disciple. They pray and they pray and they pray. They could not drive him out. Then, the man came to Jesus and said, Look, my son is vexed with unclean spirits. Sometimes he cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But I brought my son to your disciple. They could not kill him. Jesus said, bring him to me. The quality is here. Who is the characteristic of the man Jesus is asking to be brought to him? The quality is one, he falleth into the waters. Two, he falleth into the fire. And he is so vexed. He is lunatic. And the disciple could not kill him. These are his credentials. But when he came to Jesus, Jesus drove that demon out with a word. And the disciple came to Jesus and said, Why? How come we could not? But you did it. But you told us that all these things you do, greater things than this, we will do also. Because you go to your father. Now we could not drive out this demon. And Jesus looked at them. He said you could not drive it out because of your own belief. He didn't say they could not drive it out because they did not go to church. Or because they did not attend to the school that day. Or because they did not fast for 40 days. Or because they did not cram the matters. No. They could not drive it out because of unbelief. Unbelief. Is a kind of belief system, but only there is an on at the back. And this is what makes many Christians not to realize the power that is in their tongues. I will give you an instance. About 10 years ago, we were at Ohio on a youth camp. They were conducting deliverance for a certain demon. And this demon was turning around like a pan. The pastor was busy, sweating, praying, but nothing was happening. I was just a guest in the camp. When I saw the event, I was sad with him. Then I asked God a question. That is the first time in my life I asked God a direct question. Are you telling me that this demon is stronger than you? That you could not drive out this small demon? This pastor has been praying for the past two hours and this demon just refused to leave. The Lord said to me, no, it's not that I don't have power. You go and drive away the demon. I got the pastor. He said, he didn't come here for prayer. He said, the demon did not go because there is another power in that ground that is hindering the prayers of this power. That's why the demon refused to go. Send the power packing and the demon will go. I said, another power? He said, yes. Look behind you. And I saw a woman with a basket. Whenever the pastor shouts, prays in tongues or in Jesus' name, he put them into the basket and covered it. And the Lord said, send the woman back. 
Then my, the devil interpreted something into my head. The first thing was, this woman that is collecting past prayer from a pastor who has fasted and prayed for many days before this program. Are you sure you are not even prepared for the program? Are you sure it's not going to add your prayer to it and lock it into this basket? And I look, I remember what the Bible says. That the righteousness that is of faith does not say who will go into heaven. To bring Christ down to the earth. Or who will descend into hell to raise Christ up from the grave. But what does it say? The word is minded. The word is in their mouths. The word of faith which we speak. Thou shalt be creating and it shall come to pass. And light will shine upon thy words. Then I look at the woman. I say, go. Just one word. She was gone. And that demon was delivered. That's the answer. The reason is not because the man doing the prayer has no anointing. Or he doesn't have power. But the reason is simple. Because the understanding is deficient. Your understanding Determine your attitude as a believer. The more of the word of God that sucked into your Holy Spirit. Because the more of the word of God you have, determine the attitude you grow. If the word of God in you comes out to a little level, the seed you, you grow will be small. But if the word of God in you rise up to a high standard, the seed you grow will be energized. Somebody will ask, what about faith? Faith is proportional to the word of God. The amount of faith a believer has, the time of the amount of knowledge he assumes ahead from God. That's why an unbeliever who has never gone to church in his life, and now he is sick, very sick, then you got there, maybe on a wheelchair or sitting on the floor, he cannot move. And you look steadfastly on her. And you are able to minister the gospel for at least about five minutes. And the person has the expectancy to receive something from you. You only need one word for the healing to be perfected. The reason is because the word of God is quick and it's powerful. It's sharper than any sword you can ever imagine. You don't need God to do battle on your behalf. The power has already been given to you. Your knowledge determines the attitude you go. Do you know I read a place that changed my life in the scripture. The place says, O ye sons of men, ye are gods, but ye shall die like men, because why you lack understanding. He did not say because you lack faith. Because he knew if your understanding is fruitful, your faith will grow with it. Because the understanding of the word of God you have. That's what the Bible says. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the most high is understanding itself. When God gives knowledge to you, it brings understanding to the simple mind. And this understanding builds up faith in him. And it makes him to rely on his God. Daniel studied and understood by books. And because he studied the word of God and understood by books. When he was being thrown into the lion den, he was not panicking. He was not afraid. Even when the king called out to him in the den and said, Has the God whom thou sat been able to deliver thee from the pro of the lion? He said, the Lord has sent his angel and shut up the mouth of the lion that they cannot hurt me. He knew that it was not because of his righteousness that he was feared from the lion. 
He knew it was not because of his spiritual strength that the lion did not touch him. He knew it has nothing to do with his anointing. But it has to do with holding on to God in faith. And how does that come about? Because of his knowledge of God. He understood that the diligence profits more than gold. He learns to be diligent in his works. To seek the face of God for whatever mystery he did not understand. Most of us, when we dream, we wake up from dream, we cover the book. We go home and forget about it. But that was not Daniel. When Daniel dreamed a dream, he writes it down. If you understand the dream, he interprets it. If he cannot understand the dream, he will go to the face of him who is able to reveal mystery. That is to tell you the level of confidence he has in God. He sought God's presence for his dream, for his solution. He didn't go to man. He didn't sought for astrologers. He didn't sought for magician. He didn't look for diviner. To say the dream I had today was a very bad one. But your level of faith grows to some point, like for me, when I receive some dreams, if the dream is good, I claim it. But when the dream goes contrary to my belief, I stand up and say to God, Thus says the Lord, Oh, your dream will not come to pass. That is the end of it. Because why? I have grown to understand that the authority has been given me over all things. That dreams, revelation, the things of it were made for me. I was not made for them. So they don't control my destiny, right? I control their paths. I designed the path for dream and vision to go. A prophet can prophesy, say, tomorrow, thus says the Lord, you will die tomorrow. And I stand up in the name of God. And I say, God, I cannot die tomorrow. That prophecy will not come to pass. That's why in CGF, we don't encourage vision giving. Because why? It's not that it is bad. No. Because they can be changed. They can be changed. Somebody can show you a vision, you stand up in the name of God and say it will not come to pass. And that vision will never surface. Then tomorrow, what will the person say? Your visions does not come to pass. When God gives a message, He gives a directive. Every voice of God is circumstantial. God tells you this. He will give you a vision and tell you this is the condition at which this vision will come to pass. Because God does not pray favoritism. God will only give a warning. Because the laws of God does not try man with first giving him the warning. That is the reason why the word of God is perfect for the simple. And it helps build up our souls and our understanding. And it gives grace to those who are expecting to receive from him. Now, we are still in our teaching in verse 4. Of in verse 3 of Revelation and the Lord said let there be light and the Bible says instantly there was light what happened when the Lord kept quiet things remained the way they were so this should teach us some lessons as believers some Christians wake up and they blame God for their death child they blame God for the school bus that didn't come on time they blame God for the shirt that did not fit and for the shoe that did not match their leg, they blame God for everything. But let's read the man, the story of a man who blamed God and what God said to him in the book of Job. Job said, My righteousness was more than God. And God said to him, Who is it that darkened the castle of the world? With what without knowledge? Brace up yourself like a man. I will demand of you a question. And answer down there. At the end, Job could not answer the word. Do you know the reason why? 
everything that was affecting him, that's why he was under the trial of God, where in his hand he has the power to change the situation. Because God has created him. And because he is wonderfully made, he is fearfully made. And you know what the Bible says you are? You are a royal priesthood, whether you know it or not. And you are a chosen generation, a peculiar child of God, who should show forth the praise of God, who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The time of ignorance is over. We know in time past you were not part of his children. You do not have such a right. But now that you have obtained salvation, you are God's seed. You are chosen and precious. You are sanctified. And you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, what about the saints? The Bible says, let the saints sing rejoicing in glory. Let us sit galad upon their coaches. That let the high praise of God fill their mouths. We took a sword upon their hands to execute vengeance upon the heathen, to bind the kings of the earth with chains and their rulers with fatters of iron. Then you start there as a saint. You say, uh, uh, the government is frustrating me. Who is the government? They are under your authority. You are the saint. You are the righteousness of God. The Bible said a child, as long as it's a child, is not different from a servant. Even though he be the master of the house, he is not different from a servant because he's kept under tutor and governor until the time appointed of the father. And what happened when that time comes? Though he was once a servant, he became the master of the house. That is whom you are. You as a believer, you are the master of the house. But as long as you remain a child, you will be fed with pampas and milk. You will never have the taste of strong meat. Because you remain a child. You are kept under tutor, under governorship. Because you are not matured enough to handle responsibility. But by the time your faith grew to become a man, you will put away childishness. That's why Paul said, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I ate like a child. He said, but when I became a man, I put away childishness. God expects you, as a believer, to grow to a point in your life where you become matured. Matured in the things of God. Matured in understanding. Matured in the word of God. When you get to this level, God expects you to drop childish word. He expects you to grow beyond just common salvation. He expects you to grow to the deliverance, recovering of sight for the blind, raising the dead, and to grow beyond that. That is the point. You as a believer, God does not expect you to drink milk forever. He expects at a point in time in your life for you to convert from milk to strong bone. That was why Paul was angry with the Galatians. Because at the time they're supposed to be teacher, they rather that somebody teach them. That's why in six years we disciple you for maximum six months. And after six months, you are expected to produce yourself. Because when a child is born, every parent expects at a point in life for that child to reproduce himself. When a child refuses to reproduce himself, something is wrong. Because God expects you to reproduce yourself. So the same thing with the life of a believer. When you grow to some extent, God expects you to grow to some extent where you are able to deliver a seed. And say, God, I bring this to you. This is the child I born in the Lord. This is my son in God. This is the anointing I have received. I have grown with it. Now I have been able to bring forth 50 feet seed. I'll be able to bring four a hundred fruits. I'll be able to bring ten, thirty even. But God expects you not to die the way you are born. So let's understand the word of God is the connecting rod in the life of a believer. The word of God is what preserved you from sin. 
The word of God is what energizes the spirit. Every believer has the Holy Spirit. But we tax the word of God in you. Your tongues is cannot move a razor blade. Because why? It's not that you are not speaking in tongues like John. It's not that you are not speaking in tongues like Peter. But your tongues just does not move razor blade. Why is your tongues not being able to move razor blade? Because you did not back it up with the word of God. The word of God in you has not grown to the level of assurance where you have faith. And without faith, you cannot please God. Because it's just like having a father. And you are being pursued as a son. You run to a step and you see your father. You say, no, I'm not sure my father can deliver me from this. You run backward to your enemy. That is who you are. And that father will know that that son has no confidence in him. So it will not bother defending you. The same thing you do if you are a child of God. In trouble, instead of crying to God, you begin to cry to your enemy. God look at you and say, wow, I am here, stretching my hand all day long. But these people said, I am not good enough for them. Let's give you a hint from the scripture. Because of time, we're not going to be reading a lot of Bible scriptures. We got a point in time in Israel when they, Moses decided to send spy to spy out the land of Canaan. Because this is what normally happens. Before you go to war, you want to check the weakness or the strength of your enemy to see if you can overcome it. Then they got to a point. Moses said, Go and spy out the land. Check which place the land is weak. Check which place the land is strong. So bring back a word to me. They came back. They spy out the land. They set all through the entire land. The Lord really gave them favor. They even brought some of the fruit of the land. And they came back. Twelve of them, they were pessimistic. They look at the situation differently. From human point of view. From earthly point of view. Because that's what the Bible says, if you walk after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit mortify the deed of the flesh, you have eternal life. Because if you walk after the flesh, you see trouble as unsurmountable. It doesn't matter. There are people on this pew that even if Jesus walked to them and said, get up from your sick bed, they will not get up. They prefer to remain sick. Because they don't just believe that Jesus can heal them. They don't believe that Jesus has the temerity to be able to lift them up. So there are people like that. Such person, you don't waste time praying for him. I will give you an instance. I was in the mission field. And I come across somebody who was paralyzed. And I begin to pray for him. I pray for the first day. And I go home. I fasted the next day. I came back. I prayed for him. The third day I prayed. I was going back the fourth day. The Lord asked me a question on the road. Since you've been praying for somebody, did you bother to care? I know you have compassion on the person. You want to wake him up. You want to lift him up so that he can walk. Did you ask the person if he's ready to walk? And I got there. I said, brother, the Lord asked me to tell you to get up. He said, no, I don't want to get up. I want to be like this. I want to sit down. I want them to be feeding me. And the mother burst into tears. So you put yourself in this situation. For what? So that I will be feeding you? He said, yes. Then the Lord said, you see, you wasted all your days of prayer. The person you are praying for doesn't want to get up. The question is, Many of us are like that. You get to some people in the hospital. They are quite sick. That's why in mission, from that day, I learned one principal lesson. Before I pray for anybody, I ask the person what you want. Because somebody can be paralyzed. He doesn't want healing in the leg. He wants money in his pocket. Don't pray for healing for him because he will not be satisfied. But pray for money for him. He will be content. 
Some people are lying dead. They, are, they don't want life from you. Don't bother lifting them up. So, give people what they desire. The word of God is a strong tool. You can see a demon who wants to die the next day. He tells you he doesn't want deliverance. But because it is ignorance, it is common for you to use your wisdom to understand that he is not acting under the direct guidance. But until the unclean spirit leaves him, he cannot take straight. So you are going to use the spirit of God to torment him to accept deliverance. That is where wisdom comes in as a believer. The word of God is a pyramid that you can speak from all edge and at the same point speak from the top. The word of God can transform the strongest mind, but it can also met the strongest heart. The word of God can do battles, but it's not only a battle to us. The sword of faith, the shed of faith is for defense, but it can also be used for an attack. Then, the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit, the sword is not only used for an attack, the sword can also be used to defend against another sword. And against an arrow, if you are skillful with the sword. The Lord gave you the sword not only to attack your enemy. No, the sword can also be used to treat. For example, somebody can be shot with a bullet. The sword can be used to remove it and to treat the patient. Don't use the word of God only to attack and to defend against your enemy. The word of God can also be used as a transformative tool because it can pierce the heart of the stone-hearted. As a believer, use the word of God to transform the life of people around you. The word of God are of two functions. They are verbal and not verbal communication. The word of God can be spoken and people around can be transformed by hearing it and their faith is built. That's why in ministry we tell testimony. Testimony are not meant to boast the minister ego or to exalt the man of God, to show that he's a very powerful man of God. In fact, I never really believe there is any powerful man of God. We all took advantage of God because God is a powerful one. We are just his servants. An ambassador does not take, take glory for the goodness done by his country because he may not be, may be the ambassador but not the president of that particular country. So, the glory goes to the country where he is an ambassador of. That is exactly what you should think about as a child of God. Whenever we do good, we heal the sick, we raise the dead, we are only showing people of the glory of things to come. We are proclaiming a kingdom. That is our message. Our message is to tell about the kingdom. And that kingdom is the kingdom of heaven. We know there is a kingdom of this world. We know there are two formats of children. We have the children of God. We have the children of the world. Which the Bible called the seed of the serpent. So those children of the world, they are the earth dwellers. Obviously they will like everything. The world loves them because they are part of it. But of you, who is not of the world, don't expect the same fair treatment from the world as the children who are of the world. As a believer, if you expect to be treated well like unbeliever, that means you are missing the point. Somebody whose God is his belly, whose glory is in his shape, who loves earthly things, you want to use him as your competitor, as a believer. You will, you will die in your sin. Because he doesn't care about heaven. 
No, he can still, he can do anything just to get what he wants to satisfy his urge. That's why the Bible teaches us that we should not despise a thief when he comes to steal to satisfy his urge. Because what happens when the thief is caught? He will restore several times of what is called. The same thing with you as a believer. When in a child of the devil do anything, matrix, there are two laws. There are one law for the saved. There are one law for the unsaved. Even in the church, don't expect the law that applies to a believer to apply to an unbeliever. By the time you force an unbeliever to become righteous overnight, you, you give birth to hypocrite. And God hates hypocrisy as much as he hates sinner. So it's to avoid breathing hypocrisy, teach the world. Be instant in season and out of season. Stand by the truth. The world itself will do the healing and the drawing. Remember from the place we read, when Jesus sat in the seashore, multitudes gathered to him. He did not print tracts. He did not have flyers. Do you know why? As he began to declare the word of God, he sent the word of God. The word of God is like a post office. You can post it like a letter. And when you send the word of God, the word of God will draw men to God by himself. How does the word of God draw men? The word of God healed the sick. The word of God raised the dead. And the fame of those glory moved into the town. And that transformative ability of the world draw people to God. It is not you. That's what the Bible says, that the anointing you will receive will teach you all things. That you have no need that any man should teach you anymore. But that anointing will teach you the truth. And it cannot lie. The anointing you receive as a believer is a good enough teacher for you. Because the word of God can be sent on an error. What did the Bible say? He said he sent his word. And what happened when the word was sent? The word went ahead and healed them from their diseases. Today you can still send the word. You can send the word from here to people listening to me right now. And as I sent the word of God, your disease will be healed. Your affliction will be rolled away. Your pains will be taken out because of the anointing. The word of God can be sent. But first, you have to believe that the word you are sending can do the job. And secondly, the person you are sending the word to must be willing to receive it. Salvation is free. How come everybody are not saved? We don't buy it. It's free of charge. God does not charge any man money for salvation. But yet people are not saved. Because though it is free, you have to accept it to come into you. Though the healing that Jesus gives are free, though the deliverance are free, though raising the dead are free, you have to be accepted for those things. To take roots. I remember my first message as a missionary was simple. I, when I, the Lord take me to any house, I said, blessing is upon this house. The good news of the Lord is upon this house. The favor of the Lord is upon this house. When people say amen, I say, thank God. If you want all this blessing to rest in this house, accept the owner of the blessing and the blessing will come to this house and rest. And that was the message. It was a simple message. It was a direct message. And indeed, they accepted the word and the blessing rested on those houses. If you do not accept God, you cannot claim his blessing. You have to accept the messenger for you to be able to accept the message. How can you accept the messenger, the message without accepting the messenger? So many people go to church shopping. They move from 
Jerusalem to Israel, from Israel to Washington. What are they searching for? They are searching for anointing and miracle. But they left the man who they are supposed to seek. You don't want Christ, you want his power. Some people will say, I don't want to believe your God, but I just need the healing. You cannot get the healing without the God. That's why if anybody comes to me and says, I am sick in the head, I am sick in the leg, I first ask him, have you accepted Christ? Because the things, it is wrong to give the children's bread to dogs. Breasts are made for children. They are not made for dogs. We don't give that which is holy to dogs. Let them trample it on that foot and turn around and attack you. First, they accept Christ. And when that is done, you knew when a person is willing to, from the heart, confess Jesus Christ and believe from the heart and confess from the mouth, then you knew that that person is ready. Because without faith, he cannot be accepted into the family of God. And when a person has willingly accepted Christ, this blessing can come. There is nothing. I have searched through the Bible. I'm yet to find out what God cannot do. Then, if God can do all things, can you receive it? Yes. If you only believe, and you cannot believe on whom you do not know, and neither can you believe on whom you did not receive, you cannot accept God's miracles. Some people say, if I just have the power to begin to heal the sick. You will have the power to heal the sick if you can go. Because Jesus said these signs will follow them that what? Believe. How can the sign come if you do not believe? The sign is not made for those who does not believe. Jesus did not say these signs will follow them that come to pastor. The Bible said if you receive a man of God in the name that is a man of God, what will you receive? You will receive a man of God reward. If you go to a pastor in the name is a strong minister, you will receive a strong minister and reward. You will not receive God reward. But if you come to God in the name that He is God and He is able to deliver to the utmost, you will receive God reward. People don't come to me, they come to God from everywhere. If you come to me, I am a man. I'm deficient. I'm limited. My ability to save is also limited. My ability to grant you your request is also limited based on my income, based on my strength, based on my ability. But God's ability supersedes the universe. Who would you rather go to? Go to a local government chairman or go to the president? So now that is the same Thinking, instead of going to God, you go to the servant of God. When you come to God, you will get God's reward. So God expects us to take his word seriously. A good minister does not heal people. He sends the word of God. And the word does the healing. Because God will not share his glory with any man. The God that I know does not share his glory. I don't know the one you know because there are God many. So, but the God that I know does not share his glory with anybody. He will not share his glory with anybody. Some people say, but these people have results. Yes. It depends on who is answering the prayer. God answered the prayers of the faithful. The Bible said, if they seek me earnestly. God promised the children of Israel a lot of things. But you know what he concluded at the end? He said, but I will yet be inquired of them to do this. God promised you healing. He promised you deliverance. He promised you blessing. He promised you favor. But you have to ask for it. Because the Bible said, everyone that asks it, receive it. To him that seek, find it. And to him that knock, the door is open to. But what happens if I refuse to ask, refuse to knock, or refuse?
to evil seek and cannot find. For every believer, the word of God is unique and precious. In fact, many people have given their lives over centuries to preserve the truths of the word of God. The reason is, why would somebody die for something he does not? Remember what the Bible tells you. He said, for a righteous man, nobody will even die. But adventure for a very good man, so my dear to die. But God, why do we are still living in a sinful state? Dirty and wretched, a condemned criminal, waiting execution. Christ, take your place. You know that nobody will die for a sinner. But God took your place. That's why the word of God is unique. That's why the word of God is weak. That's why the, God is, the word of God is powerful. When we mention the word love, God himself is love. The reason because, not because we love God. No, it has never been so. Even when God made a covenant with Abraham, because there was no one greater than himself, he swore by himself. And that's what the Bible tells you by two immutable things. It is impossible for God himself to lie. When God make a covenant, the reason why he swore by himself was because there was no one else greater than himself. He made Abraham fall into a deep sleep. He passed through this thing alone. Telling Abraham that his covenant with him was unconditional because God cannot be equality with man. Man is fading. But God did this to prove the extent of his love towards us. Even when we disobey him in the garden, we rebel against his word. We feel disobedience to God. Instead of taking our life, returning us to dust, wiping up our history, and creating a new man on earth, he clotted us. He did not say because we were sinner, we did not deserve his garments. He clothed us with a life of a sheep that has not committed any sin, that was blameless. And that's why he said to them that I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of peace, not of evil. Today we have men who wake up and say they are our own God. It's just like when they crave said before the potter, I am my God. The potter can do two things to the crate. He can smash the crate and remove it into another pot. He can pieces the crate and pack it into the dustbin. That is the end of the crate. And that is whom we are in the hands of the Almighty. He can direct us whichever way he pleases. And yet one will say, is there knowledge in the most high? The fact that you are blessed, you prosper in the earth, you flourish with wet and silver and gold, does not mean that you are blessed. Because people, it is only a fool that equates gain to godliness. Godliness with contentment is a great gain. Be content with the little that you have, and God will see your contentment. Job was the most blessed in all the lands of the East, in all. But the devil took everything in a single day. What did Job did? Did he curse God? Did he charge God foolishly? No. He said, naked came I out of my mother's womb, and in nakedness do I return. This is a man that was grounded in knowledge. He not only grew, but he understand how he grew. That God gave him everything he had while he was still on earth. What about today? We have people that ate and drank wine. The next thing they said, there is no God. Oh, my soul, eat and drink. Forget about God. And the Lord said to them, Tonight, thou fool, thy soul is required from thee. But before you die, I want you to tell me one question. What becomes of all the so-called wealth you claim to have? What becomes of all the goods you store up in the bank? 
What becomes all the house you build in all city you are proud about? What becomes of them? Because surely tonight you will surely die. But before you die, I want you to tell me what becomes of all your works? Vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. That's what the Bible asks. Has the worker of iniquity no knowledge? Who eat up my people as they eat bread? And they did not even call upon the name of the Lord in it. Here they are in great terror. We are no terror was. God is saying to you tonight that so, in view of all priceless value of God's word, can ask in Mark 4.21, here is the Bible in our life. It is hidden away. Or is it high up? Where do you keep the Bible in your life? Do you put it in your closet and lock it up? Or it is not important because my colleague will laugh at me. People will say he is a Christian and they will mock me. Or is your Bible lifted above everything in your life? Illuminating every corner of your life? The blessing of God's word. Is it alive? Is it quick and powerful in your decision? How many times it speaks to you? It works in you. Hebrew 4, verse 12 to 13. His word is a mirror that lets you see yourself as you read through. The word of God never lets you deceive yourself or hide the truth. James 1, verse 22 to 24. And Mark 4, verse 22. The word of God is thoroughly equipped to be and to do everything God speaks to you about. You know, the word of God cannot be compromised. Neither can it be changed. Neither can it be in the same room with idol. 2 Timothy chapter 15 to 17. From the infancy that has known the scriptures that is able to make you wise. The scripture is able to make you wise. And it gives you wisdom you need for salvation. Through faith in Christ Jesus. You know all scriptures are bread of God. And it's useful for teaching, for rape, for correction, for training in righteousness. So that you, O man of God, may be completely and thoroughly equipped to do every good work. Do you want to do good work? You don't need power. You don't need prayer matters. You need the word of God. Go search it. That's what the Bible says. The summary said, the word I have I hidden in my heart. That I might not sin against it. The word is a light to my feet and a lamp to my path. To guide and to save me from sin. And to show me the heavenly ways. That word has I hidden in my heart. That I might not sin against thee. It is often said that the Bible is the sun in print. Because Jesus is called the word of truth. John 1.1 1, 1. John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was the beginning with God, and all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In this world, that's what the Bible says, but how do we understand that this world is what brought about the creation of all things? Because we do not understand that the word of God created the heaven and the earth and everything in it, except we have faith in God. If you come to God, you must believe that God is God. When you come to that knowledge of believing that God is God and bow down to his will, you will understand that it takes the word of God to create everything you see. That the things that appear were made out of invisible things. That all the things you can see today, they are temporal. Do you want success and prosperity? Do you want to be bold just as it was told Joshua in Joshua 1 verse 8 the Lord said be strong and be very courageous do not frighten neither be dismayed for I will be with you God is the strengthener of his people the word of God can be sent to every situation the word of God can change and can break every matter 
The word of God is strong enough to break matter to pieces and find it and the wings will carry it away. That's why Jesus says, if any man just have a faith as a grain of a grain of mustard seed or even a grain of rice, he can say it to this matter, be removed and be thrown into the sea. It will be done. So far, there is no doubt in his heart. Because any, do you know why that is a barrier to your faith? That is a barrier to your faith because when you doubt, you are telling God, I'm not sure you can do it. And God became angry when he says, I'm not sure you can do it. The reason why the children of Israel spent 40 years is because of unbelief. A journey of 40 days took them 40 years just because of unbelief. Brethren, do not also have the same mind of unbelief. Do you know in the book of Revelation, the first people to be thrown into the lake of fire, we are not the fornicators, we are not the adulterers, but the fearful. The fearful. Those who do not trust God enough to stand by God. Those when they see the blenching of a glass or the sharpness of a sword, they deny the Lord itself. They are the first to be thrown into the lake of fire. Because the thing you fear most will come upon you. And if you want to prosper in everything, read Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. And when you read, what do you hear? Have you ever noticed that when God reads, when God's word is read, or heard, you often hear deep within, not, not with your ear, that God's voice. We should consider carefully what we hear, because with the measure we use it, will be measured unto us. Because the word of God can be sent in every situation. And because the word of God can be sent in every situation, it can also be used either mischievously or righteously. There was a time in Israel when David was about to wipe out a tribes. And the man took up his son and he sacrificed him. The son that should reign over him, he sacrificed him on top of the fence. And the anger of the Lord fell upon the children of Israel. Why? Because the man has offered something that was astonishing. Though he was not offering to God because God does not demand human sacrifice. But because God saw that what he is about to do to him, he sees it as evil. And God does not take part in iniquity. God's anger was kind of against Israel. And so David took up the bodies of the sons and he went to bury them. To make sure that the anger of the Lord came down. Because why? He don't understand. God does not support iniquity. God is not going to say, I love you so much. Therefore, your sin has become righteous. It's not. God is a righteous God. Lucifer was the son of the money. He was thrown down. If an angel that sin was thrown down, what makes you think you are? You will be scared if you continue in your sin. How do you use God's word? You use God's words to renew your heart. Romans 10 verse 17. You use God's words to renew your word. Romans 10 10 and Proverbs 18 2. You use God's word to renew your action. John 14 15. You use the word of God to enforce victory. Satan has no answer when Jesus said, It is written. Because what is written cannot be undone. That's what the Bible says in the book of Habakkuk. He said, write the vision, make it plain, put it on top of a tablet that it may run for many days. And God is saying the same thing to you. Whatever you hear tonight, write it in the books so that it will run for many days. The word of God does not change. That's what the Bible says, command me concerning the thing that I have written. Says the Lord, command me concerning my word, hold me ransom to my word because he honor his word even more than his name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it and they are saved. But God honor his word even more than his name. 
Matthew 4, verse 1 to 11, especially verse 4, 7, and 10. God tells you that whenever it is written, Satan keep quiet because he cannot do anything against what is written. It is important to pass on the word, but you must understand that Satan is not just going to hear it is written and run away. He is going to prove you to see whether you believe in what you say. Because some people can say things they don't mean. Satan is going to wait to listen. Does this man mean what he says? Because whosoever that God's word can save and be given even more healing, freedom, guidance, blessing, prosperity by believing in it. But the man who does not have God's word to believe or act upon has none of this blessing. And he will lose even what he has. Because the Bible says, even he that has none, the little he has will be taken from him and given to the man that has ten. Because if you don't use the word of God in you, it will be taken away. And when God's word is taken away, we saw it in the life of Saul. What we enter is this evil spirit. We take over that person. The spirit of fear. The spirit of doubt. The spirit of self-pity. We enter into such a person. Because when God lives, it cannot be empty. So people will say, don't serve God and don't serve Satan. It doesn't exist. You are either for God or you are for the devil. When God removes his spirit from you, the devil will feel it. He will feel it with his evil spirit. At that point, the state of that person becomes worse. That is his life and source of eternity. Mark 4, verse 25. How then do we hear the word of God? God's word, God has made it very simple for us to hear his voice. Just get alone with him and open your Bible. Simple. Want to hear the word of God? Open your Bible. The Bible says, search the scripture. In there ye think ye have life. They are all of them that testify of what I have spoken. The scripture. Admit your weakness. Pray to learn with the Holy Spirit helps. The Bible will become God's message verse for you. Take time to reflect upon what you read. And here, because through meditation, you will be surprised of how God speaks to you and answer your question. As a new believer, I knew none of these things. I wanted to pray. I went to a prayer meeting, quietly prayed and walk. My wife and my children, because of all the problem we were living, we were having. But after a while, I felt the urge to pick up the Bible. And I felt to open it, Psalm 128. And I began to read God's first astonishing message. Comforted me through the world by saying, Blessed are all those who fear the Lord, who walks in his way. You will eat the fruit of your work. And blessed and prosperity will be yours. And your wife will be like a fruitful vine. And your son like holy spoons around your table. That is the voice of the Lord. And he said, blessed is the man that has his quiver full of them. This is God. When God speaks, no man can change his word. The word of the Lord strikes the hills. He finds the mountain. He breaks stones and marrow and levels the ground to pieces. That is what the word of God is. Brethren, Today we have an opportunity. This opportunity is for all believers to hearken to the word of God. Apply it to your daily life. The Bible says, if an angel comes to you and he says a different message than what the word of God is saying to you, he says you should not listen. You should not listen. Even though the angel comes to you in the name of God, and he preach a different message than this message that comes from the word of God. Because the Bible, Peter says to you, I was with Christ on the Mount of Configuration. I was with him when I saw Elijah Moses came in like figure. And he was transfigured before them. He said, above all, I believe the word of God. We have a more sure word of prophecy. And I tell you today, beyond what you see in your dream, beyond what the prophet prophesied, beyond what visions can tell you, Beyond what Mark can tell you story about, the word of God is there. 
confirm it for yourself. That's why Paul said the barriers were more noble than the Thessalonica. In that when they heard the word of God, they accepted with gladness. But they went home every day. They went home every day searching the scriptures. If those things they heard were true. Brethren, tonight, I don't want you to take my word for it. Take your Bible. Search the scriptures. Prove everything I've told you if they be true. Because if you cannot prove a thing, therefore you cannot claim it. Until you can measure anything, you cannot claim to the weeks or the strength of that particular thing. The Lord is ready to take the word of God. Prove it. And when you are able to prove the theory, it will help you throughout your life. That's what the Bible said to you. That word has I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. The word of the, of the Lord is a strong tower. The Bible says the righteous, they run under it. You know what happened? They are saved. The righteous. When they hear the word of God, that is all they need for their salvation. They don't need any other thing. Because the word of God to them is a strong tower. But when the righteous hear about it, hmm, it is finished. They are saved. That's why the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are saved. Brethren, tonight, the word of God can still be a strong tower in your life. You still have opportunity. Now that the word of God is quick, in your life and is powerful and is sharper than any two edged sword. It can divide and sunder the intent of the heart. It can strike through bones and marrow tonight. Brethren, let us pray. Before we pray, I just want you to reflect upon this word. Is God speaking to your heart right now? Is He telling you, Oh, my son, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, and he answered, I will come into him, and I will suck with him, and he with me forever. Brethren, are you tired of the labor you have been doing? The word of the Lord says, come unto me, all ye that labor. And I heavenly laden, I will give you rest. Rest has been promised to God's people. God has finished his work and he rested on the seventh day. Do you want to join his rest? Or do you want to remain in your labor? God does not force people to come to him. He is not the devil. The devil is the one that wants people to come to him by force. But God is persuading you. He said, I have said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. I have put blessing on Mount Hema and curse on Mount Hema. Choose life so that you and your generation may live. But when you see have the opportunity today to choose life, so that you and your family can receive the blessing. So that your marriage can be fruitful once again. So that your children can grow and prosper in life. So that healings can be in your home. So that salvation can come to your home. You have the opportunity to choose it. And the choice is yours. It's not in the hand of any pastor. It's not in the hand of any deacon. If this word that I sent to you cannot heal you, no man can. No pastor can, no deliverance can, no ministers can. The word of God is enough. The word of God is quick and it's powerful. And the Lord is saying to you today, all you that labor and are heavily laden, come to me and I will give you rest. And to you who are being chains and bondage, thus says the Lord, lift up your head, O gates, and lift them up, you everlasting love. For the King of Glory is coming in tonight. Who is this King of Glory? He is the Lord strong and mighty. He is the Lord mighty in battle. The King of Glory is coming into your situation right now. Ah, He is sending you healing from His throne of grace. The Lord is sending you healing. Right now, the healings of the Lord, the Son of Righteousness has risen. There is healing in His wings. And he is sending the healing to your house, to your family, to your children. As many that are sick listening to the sound of my voice, 
Just come close to the screen. Stretch your hand towards it. And says, by his stripes, I am healed. And that's all. That sickness will be gone. If you can dare to believe, your healing will come immediately. Oh, Masakara Bayara Babu Sebiruaya. Binisa Barota Sakaya. Rikotomia Tabarata Sakuria. You that is listening to me right now. And you are weeping in your heart. Thus says the Lord. That problem is solved. That problem is solved. Immediately. It's immediately it is over. It is over. Makaya Rababo Sakaraba. Benisuman Haya Rahusa. The Lord is the one that is sending his word to life. And he is sending his word into your situation and is healing you from your disease. He's setting you free from captivity. And he's giving you a newness of life. The word of God is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. And if you have not accepted the Lord, you want his blessing, it is not possible. You must come to the Lord first. You must give your life to Christ. Now is the day of salvation. Tomorrow might be too late. If you have not accepted Christ, just say this few prayers after me. Say, Lord, I come to you. From today, I believe that you died for me on the cross. And you take my pains and my sorrows away. From now, I am ready to walk with you and to cooperate with you. I am tired of my labor. And from henceforth, I need rest. I need rest to my situation. I need rest to my sickness. I need rest to all the labors that the enemy has put into my life. I am tired of listening to the thief. Henceforth, make me a new creature. That is all. If you say this prayer after me, you have just accepted Christ. We want to hear from you. Just follow the link. Go to our website. Leave a message for us. We will reply you. We will send you a convert guide. By through the convert guide, go through it. It will show you what you need to stand firm and to become a good Christian. God bless you as you participate. <coughs> Brethren, you are welcome once again. This is where we conclude the Open House Fellowship. If you miss any of our teaching, you can still see it on cgfnslogin.app. cgfnslogin.app. And you can also go there if you want to study in our school. School of Mission, you can fill out the form and join the course. God bless you as you participate. Amen. Brethren, we want to see you again. Just go through the link. The link of the website is below this video.